Over the last several years, studies have been conducted around the United States to find the best site for a commercial wave energy park, where dozens of generation units could be installed. The Pacific Coast was found to have huge potential, and specifically the Oregon coast, mainly because of its electrical infrastructure left over from the forest products industry. Vacant mills of a once thriving industry are paving the way for wave energy, bringing depressed coastal towns back to life. Listen. Can you hear that? That, my friends, is green energy. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> no. When is the first wave to energy machine actually coming to Reedsport? Well, right now, the, the plan is for next summer sometime. The first that they can put in the water, uh, the first buoy is sometime after June 15th. And so sometime in June or July or early August, we're going to have a buoy in the water and, and it, there's going to be a celebration. Now, nobody knows exactly how many jobs can be created from this, but you can kind of estimate, can't you? Because your goal is, what, 10, 10 buoys? It, in the near term, build out here will be 10 buoys. One buoy probably doesn't create a lot of jobs. You'll have some uh, people collecting data, but uh, it, it, that, that one device won't be, gener or, excuse me, won't be co connected to the grid. But once you get 10, then you have buoys coming in and out. So they have about a two-year uh, maintenance schedule. So pretty regularly, you're going to have buoys coming in, coming out, being maintained, being reprimed re and repainted, and having a mechanism inside checked. And then jobs will really be created. And whether those jobs are right here in Reedsport at American Bridge, or whether they're in Coos Bay, I, I, I would prefer they're right in my backyard. But as we know on the coast, the rising tide floats all boats. And if they're within 20 miles, it's going to help us all. How come Reedsport? How did you get this incredible privilege? It's pretty serendipitous. And in fact, it, uh, six or seven years ago, there were two studies done, one done by Oregon State University and another done by the Electric Power Research Institute out of Stanford or Palo Alto. And both had identified the area right off our coast here, about two miles out, uh, as the pre prime hotspot on the, the uh, Pacific coast for generating wave power. And there were several factors that came into play. One was the ocean topography, ocean bottom topography. One was the quality of the waves. The other is the fact that we have this wonderful substation right behind us. So the, the, so the juice could go on the grid uh, very close to where it was generated. So are you going to break a bottle of champagne over the bow as it gets floated out into the ocean? I, I don't know what the, what the state will <laughs> allow me to do in their waters. So I'm not going to make any comments in, uh, ahead of time. Just go for it. Go, Just do I, it. I will. Okay. And then ask for forgiveness later. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure that, that there's been a few broken bottles out there before. So. <laughs> One of the biggest challenges to wave energy is the potential impact on commercial fishing and crabbing. Some of the best places to capture wave energy are also prime crabbing beds. When it comes to wildlife, these potential wave energy farms are right in the whale migration paths up and down the coastline. Whales can go around the structures, but they also have the potential to run into them. All of these issues are being explored and solutions are being presented so that all of these challenges can be met. Wave Energy, quite possibly our largest green energy source, and Oregon is the prime location for it to grow.